Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard. I'm back with OG55. Just one of them this time. <laughs> and we're here talking about all things Disney and theme park. Welcome back. Where can we find you and your crew? All right. Well, you can find me on YouTube. I do pretty much a lot of the same kind of stuff um, that like Ethan does, uh, Mr. Wizard. Um, but we do a lot of discussion-based videos about theme parks. We dive into like even the corporate end. We talk a lot about Bobby Chapek and Iger. Uh, we get into, uh, we have a whole show called the Orange Nerd Show where we get into like the film stuff like Star Wars and Marvel. So it's a whole lot of stuff. But our main focus is Disneyland because West Coast is the best coast. <laughs> That's right. West Coast is the best coast. <laughs> and you got to take away his opening speech. To oh, prove that. <laughs> oh, and right across the way from good old Disneyland over the weekend, Knott's had a bit of a trouble. We had a TikToker teenager trouble with a brawl of like 200 people, and the poor security guards got knocked out. Wow. And that's not the first one. Last year, that's some shoot around there. Then someone scaled the Supreme Screen. What's going on at Knott's? Uh, you know, that's interesting. I, I didn't know about the one last year. I, I honestly don't follow Knott's that much, but um, that is a little odd, though, that they keep it seemingly happening at Knott's all the time. That, that's mm -hmm. a strange phenomenon. Uh, do they, uh, like, you go all the time. You've been to Knott's quite a bit. I mean, do they, like, when you go, do you, do you feel like there's, like, a lack of, like, proper security? Or, like, what's the deal with that? It's weird. <laughs> Now let's see. I remember last time I was in for Scary Farm, and they I on then the uh, one of those festivals, and they had they had the cool security system where they have like in Disney World, you know, you, you walk through, you don't have to sh stop and check everything. But then apparently I've been seeing some comments online where even though if the thing beeps, the, no one pulls them over, and they oh, just wow. keep they them walk through. So I guess it seems. Uh, I guess the security has been a little lax lately at Knott's, which is disappointing. It's such a nice park. They got to beef that up. They got to. They got to beef up their security, especially if this isn't the first time they've had issues like that. You know, because that's you know people go to these parks trusting these companies to keep them safe. You know, mm -hmm. and you, you and it, it's never a good thing when when you start getting on the news for all the wrong reasons and stuff like this people are going to stay away from it because they're going to be like, well, I don't want to go because this is like the third incident in like the past few years or something. Exactly. No, I have to be real careful about that. And now, as you probably know, Six Flags back in the day and still kind of people think, oh, I don't want to go to Six Flags. Oxford attracts a whole bunch of gang members and a whole bunch of stuff. They're all a whole bunch of incidents um, because of stuff that happened in the 90s, right? Now, funny enough, Six Flags Knott's has had more incidents than Six Flags since the year 2000, which I just learned like a couple days ago. Wow. Which is very interesting. But, so, Six Flags, I don't know what they did, but I guess they upped their security, but they also raised the prices. Do you think Knott's should raise their price? Because, you know, Disney and Universal have our premium prices. You don't see many incidents, or really any incidents at those places, you know, with especially massive brawls or anything. Do you think they should raise the price, but also do you think that it will price, like people will complain that it prices out the low lower income or teenage people? They, they will complain. I mean, they, they'll always complain whenever Disney raises prices, but <laughs> yeah. you, bring, you bring up an interesting point, uh, Ethan, when it comes to like the, the instances seem to happen with the, with the parks that are cheaper to get in. And mm -hmm. I do think there's something to that in, in the fact that like, if you're going to pay like an arm and a leg to go to a Disney vacation, you're, you're spending a thousand dollars for a few days at Disneyland or something crazy for your family. You're going to be on your best behavior. You invest a lot of money into this experience and, and you know, and it's a lot of, it's a lot of dough to shell out and uh, you're going to behave, you know, like, you know, like if you're at a fancy restaurant, you're gonna behave differently than if you're at McDonald's, right? I mean, that's just kind of everyone is. You're 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 putting more money. You're 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 putting more money down on it. So I think there is something to be said about that. Like if you can go to Knotts for like a hundred bucks for your whole family, you know, it's it's cheap. It's cheap, mm -hmm. and so you're gonna, you're gonna attract people that really don't 
they really don't care, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they didn't really spend much to get in anyway. They're not really, they have no skin in, in the game, so to speak, when it comes to that. So I do think that is definitely a factor. I do think that, that there is, it's not a coincidence that the higher price parks like Disney have lesser instances like that. Mm -hmm. so I think there's like more respect when you, when, when you're shelling out a lot of money, man, you're, you're going to make sure your kids are well behaved. And you know what I'm saying? Like you, yeah. you put a lot, a lot on the line here for that vacation. It's, it's different than when, when you only spend a hundred bucks on your whole family. Yeah. Cause I think you can get them. If you get them online, Knott's is only $40 a person, which is great. Right. Like I spend more on gas than that. Right. Yeah. Me too. I just put like almost almost a hundred bucks in my gas tank the other day. Well, we're, in we're in California, so it's uh, <laughs> you know, we're, we, got, we got like we got like the seven dollar gas out here. It's it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, maybe uh, hopefully not. Well, I think at least beef up the security because uh, you know, especially with Skay Farm, their most attended event of the year happening with a lot of teenagers. Hopefully, it'll be on there best behavior i also heard disney stepped up their security just in, i guess the past couple days you know so i guess people felt safer so that's nice and cool. speaking of disney d23 is coming up are you going this year uh, i was thinking about it. i was actually talking about uh, my buddy uh ryan yesterday about this and i, I was thinking i'm thinking about going I, I went last time in 2019 had a really fun time so i'm, I'm thinking about maybe uh Maybe hitting it up. I don't know if I'll go to any of the panels. Maybe I'll just go and kind of, kind of walk around the floor and just kind of shop and do that whole thing. I don't know. We'll see. If I can get into the parks panel, that'd be awesome. Are you gonna go? I wanted to. I wanted to go to the parks panel, but I think isn't. I don't know. If there's any tickets left? But if I could go to the parks panel, I would go to the parks panel because boy, oh boy, I think today is the this year's the year. We're here, we got to hear something about Tomorrowland. There's too many non, too many Tomorrowland things coming to not sit here and about Tomorrowland. There, there's too many rumors when it comes to Tomorrowland. There's too many rumors. There's too much smoke for there for there to be no fire. We're talking WDWNT is talking about a new Tomorrowland coming and a new People Mover. Mm -hmm. um, even Mike Chat made a few a few articles now i think about mm -hmm. about you know tomorrowland is coming tomorrowland is coming just a bunch of these like outlets are reporting on this so maybe it won't happen who knows but there's at least a lot of talk a lot of chatter within within disney for mm -hmm. this to happen for all these outlets to be reporting it it's not just one outlet there's multiple outlets yeah and then the newest one about the carousel building being plopped out for the seating area you know a lot of stuff's happening which one is your, which one, if you had to take all of them, which one would you want the most? Out oh, of the it, light year things, the people mover, and the carousel. Okay, fine. The people mover, but then second most, <laughs> the carousel building for seating. Now, do you think that would, if they do that, do you think that would be like just temporary? Like, let's say they have, you think they'd have like a multi phase renovation of Tomorrowland and temporarily they just replace it with seating, but eventually another attraction will be in there? I, I think so. That sounds like a very temporary thing. It's a very chapec thing where it's like, <laughs> we're, we're going to spread it out over multiple years. So we'll bulldoze it this year. But and then phase like, two. Yeah, then phase two will actually build something there, you know? So I can definitely see that. The only fear I have, though, when it comes to bulldozing that building, it's a massive building and it blocks out a lot of Harbor Boulevard and like oh, that yeah. area. So you bulldoze that building and you really open the land up to the outside world, which kind of worries mm -hmm. me a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it provides a decent amount of shade from when it's hot. So hope is that some type of shade will be replacing it. But yeah, I guess they have to build some kind of temporary berm or something. Uh, yeah. If they, if they cared enough to do it. Um, I hope so. <laughs> and so. I really hope so. I mean, and and also I was kind of hoping that like if they do bring the people mover back, you can even u utilize since since the people mover track wouldn't be going over the submarine lagoon in the old motorboat area, mm -hmm. you can maybe have some indoor track for the people mover in that building mm -hmm. and have almost like a show building with like controlled lighting and things like that. You know, um, I think that would be really, really, really cool. Um, so I kind of hope they keep the building, but they just utilize it better than what they what they're using it for now. Yeah, because there's a lot of space in there, two stories, and there's just kind of just open space like everywhere. Like that's like a prime spot right there. It's prime. You could do so much with it. Uh, it would be a shame to bulldoze that and just put a bunch of like seating stuff, I and mean, that would be horrible. 
Mm -hmm. Now I wonder, remember the Imagineering story we saw uh, Joe Rody like take off, he's playing around with that building, that big model. I wonder what if they're ever gonna use that original plan, whatever they're thinking, that there, or if there's if they have something different. I'm uh, hopefully we find out whatever that was, whatever they were thinking in that uh when he was doing that. That was very interesting. Well, Joe Joe Rody is brilliant. I'm a huge fan of Joe Rody. I mean, he took the, he did the impossible when it when it came to um uh Tower of Terror turning that into a guardians um, mm -hmm. attraction that was like the impossible and he, he hit home run he really did uh, it turned out better than the original attraction mm -hmm. um so i would love to see his take on a tomorrowland so i'm sure whatever he was working on the concepts and everything were probably top notch hopefully they give the imagineers a proper budget to kind of fulfill at least some of what roadie wanted to do hopefully mm -hmm. Uh, we'll see. I'm just surprised that we're even talking about it at all. I mean, I I I'm really I know, right? it's even a thing. It, it's crazy. And here we thought that D23 was going to focus on more Disney World again this year. That's what I thought. I I would I mean, I really thought this is going to be the Walt Disney World show again because it seems like every every D23 the only time <laughs> Disneyland really gets a big announcement is when it like we share it with Disney World. So They're like Star Wars right galaxy's edge yeah. or or star tours the adventures continues mm -hmm. we never really get our own stuff mm -hmm. this might be our year fam this might be our year this could be it two months away and then do you think so you know mr scott he posted that video on that he's working on the motorboard cruise area do you think that would be part of tomorrowland or fantasyland um, I think it's definitely Fantasyland, and the reason why I'm I'm um, I'm saying Fantasyland is because he also posted in June that he was on a work trip in Iceland. Now, oh yeah, Frozen. right? Yep, yeah. and Iceland Frozen Two takes um, or Frozen Two is very much inspired by Iceland, so <laughs> I'm almost certain that is going to become part of Fantasyland, and it'll be Frozen, and that's a billion dollar franchise. So they're they're that's gonna happen i mean i think that's that's look nothing's confirmed until we hear officially but yeah that's gonna happen they, they, they they've been clamoring for some frozen to be put into disneyland for a long time so i'm surprised it's not here already actually like it's been like oh the first one came out in what 2013 13 almost 10 years ago insane it's crazy now what now the Matterhorn? You know, we heard the rumors the Matterhorn's like crumbling. Do you think it would survive a fantasy land expansion? Oh yeah, no, that's a that that's a that's a I think that's total mythology, like fan mm -hmm. mythology of like mm -hmm. if they if they get rid of this thing over here, then the Matterhorn will sink. I think that's all baloney. Yeah, I don't buy into any of that. I think it'll be fine. And I actually, but I what I do think though mm -hmm. is that this people mover rumor that we're hearing, you know that. They made it very clear on the WDWNT article that they're not expanding the people mover over the motorboat cruise and uh, lagoon, mm -hmm. uh, you know, submarine lagoon. Well, I think that's be possibly because of this frozen attraction, right? That that the Trowbridge yeah. is talking about because they want to get rid of that track. Mm hmm. Kill right? two birds with one stone, right there. Right, you kill them two birds one stone. Now all they got to worry about is the monorail track, but they can work around that. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, they're supposed to reroute that anyway. So I feel like they got that part. I feel like that should be too too bad. Do you think the Matterhorn would have survive, but survive as an original attraction? Do you think they try to stick an IP on it as part of a, a fantasy and expansion? I really I hope. Frozen mini land, right? And right oh. next to the Matterhorn. And do you think they try to have the Matterhorn as Olaf's kind of sledding adventure or something? Or oh, do you think man. That's interesting. I, I I would hope not. I I don't I don't think I, I would hope not. It, like me for too. me, yeah, I think for me, like the only reason they should ever insert an IP into something that's non-IP is to increase demand. Mm -hmm. So and I know my Epcot people are going to hate me for saying this, but like Maelstrom <laughs> wasn't really like super popular. So they put Frozen are there. Are you kidding me? Maelstrom is the best <laughs> ever. Yeah, you know. And it's like, okay, so so you put Frozen there and, and, it, and it builds the demand, right? 
But <laughs> Matterhorn is already insanely popular. Like, what could they possibly benefit from adding up for like an IP in there? Like, it's it's already popular. It's really kind of a pointless endeavor and kind of a waste of money in a lot of ways. So I, I don't think they will, and I hope they don't. Yeah, I hope they don't either. But you know, whew, that light year stuff—you never know. Ooh, we. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that movie's flopping pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness because I don't think I can go on a permanent version of Light Year on Space yeah. Mountain. No way. Like a temporary overlay would be uh, I'll be all right, but like a permanent thing, oh, that'd be insane. And no, temporary be would be cool. Temporary would actually be very fun, but yeah, permanent mm -hmm. would be would be stupid because then you would also limit your ability to do the overlays like you can't really do the holiday thing the halloween mm -hmm. thing you can't really do like you know um, hyperspace mountain anymore you completely like kind of neuter it right now it's you're stuck mm -hmm. with this one ip and it, i think it's a really bad decision and and i i really don't think it's gonna happen especially now that the movie's not doing well yeah Whew, thank goodness Whew, crazy man so and then let's see Wow, so do you think it's possible that we get a t some sort of Tomorrowland announcement and Fantasyland announcement at D23? Since they kind of, the, since the people who were stuff and the, the froze and stuff kind of, kind of coincide with each other? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think that there, that's a big possibility. I, I think that's a big possibility. And actually, you know, our, our, our friend Family Man 23, mm -hmm. um, he was he had an actually interesting theory about this because he was saying how there's a lot of rumors surrounding anaheim right now like a lot mm. more than usual it's kind of interesting oh, like, like like quadruple amount of usual it's crazy right and it's kind of like he was saying it might be like a play by the imagineers because none of them want to move to florida and remember what they were saying when the Lake Nona announcement let like the people the imagineers working on the California projects will be in California <laughs> So mm -hmm. his theory was the Imagineers are pumping the system full of a bunch of Disneyland stuff so they can all stay in California. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Wow. <laughs> and then, you know, the move was just delayed till 2026. Hmm. Interesting. Yep. Interesting. That is a good idea. Very interesting. Hmm. The, the Imagineers are playing some 40 chess. Family man's the Mr. Investigator over here. <laughs> wow. And then, so we got that. And then the gate tax. Now, the 2% gate tax that they're going to vote on. Do you think that could be some sort of, or Disney can make some sort of deal, let's say. Like, all right, all right. I'll support this. Two, we'll support this 2% gate tax. But. Then you like approve Disneyland forward, you know, some 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 sort of like deal I, like that. I think that's a huge possibility, and I'm gonna I'm gonna actually yes, I think it's a big possibility that that that's what they're doing because look, that would give Anaheim, the city of Anaheim, kind of a, a, a like a like a like a save face kind of moment. What they can do is then they can go to the constituents in Anaheim and say, look, the Anaheim mayor corruption probe was a terrible thing. We're not going to give Disney a blank check. So what mm -hmm. we did was we're going to have a 2% tax on entertainment, which will, you know, benefit the citizens of Anaheim. And then we'll give Disney the zoning in exchange. But so it's it's like we're giving Disney something, but we're not giving it for free anymore. Mm -hmm. Now they got to give us this. And I think it's kind of a, a safe face kind of moment. And it's kind of a win-win for both sides. Anaheim gets to go back to its constituents and say, hey, look, we got this for you. And Disney can say, hey, you know, we're going to get the rezoning. I think it's definitely connected. And actually, Ethan, um, in just a second, I'm going to have you share my screen. Oh, because oh show screen time. Here we go. Here we go. Because this is actually something that might be very relevant to what's going on, too. Um, I wouldn't be surprised um, at all. Give me just a second while I go ahead and share my screen. Make sure I have no porn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not I was Asian porn in there. <laughs> right, right. That, that, that would be that would be a moment, yeah. wouldn't it? All right. So go ahead and share my screen real quick. So this was this came out the other day, July 14th, or actually it was updated on the 15th. So this is very recently, just a couple days ago. 
Okay. And it says here that no campaign finance reform for Anaheim. And, and, um, Basically, what happened was is that the city council, I guess they're not going to do campaign finance. And what this whole article goes into is how initially what they wanted to do was any any council member right mm -hmm. of Anaheim that got like donations from like an entity, let's say from Disney, they would have to recruit recuse themselves from voting on something related to Disney. Mm -hmm. and they, oh and they, yeah that makes sense yeah right and so but they but they knocked it down they, they they completely shot that whole thing down which tells me that anaheim is sort of like they're not all in on this like oh we're, we're gonna take we're gonna stick it to disney they're not all <laughs> in on that. they're not all in at all they're actually like okay you know what we're gonna go ahead so this um, in married to like also what you were saying with the two percent tax, mm -hmm. there there's stuff going on over there. I think they're working a deal out. I think they're that the, the city and the, I mean the um yeah the city council and Disney they're kind of all kind of working all this stuff behind the scenes, and mm -hmm. um I I think they're negotiating because if it look I remember reading the article when when the FBI thing came out with Harry Sadu. All these council members were coming out saying like, yeah, we're going to we're going to really we're going to really tighten the reins on on all these big entities in the area and yada, yada, yada. Then this comes out and they all vote no on it. Why? That's a little fishy. That's a little fishy. It makes me, sad. Mm -hmm. it makes me feel like they worked out something with Disney and now everything is cool and they're all good now. You know, we'll see. We you know, see. yeah, they probably because also, you know, Disneyland Ford, that would encourage more of the investment to the city of Anaheim with them, you know, with, the, with the permits and the building and all that, to hire more people. So, you know, they obviously have budget deficit from COVID for two years. So the gay tax plus the additional investment, billions of dollars over the resort, would really help the financial coffers as well. Yeah. Oh no, hundred percent, hundred percent. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident that Disneyland Forward will will, will move forward. I'm not as confident as I was pre FBI probe, but I'm more confident than I was a month ago. So confidence is coming back up again, but I'm, and then that is kind of all dovetails into what we're going to talk about in a little bit with the parking lot for downtown Disney. Yeah. Well, geez. You know what? So I read the nice chat Disneyland update today. And they mentioned it. They mentioned just a little brief paragraph. They said, "Oh, just some clearing going on in the parking lot." Then they moved on to the next thing. Like, does no one care? This, there's a whole parking lot that is just like gone, and uh, it's gone from the app, and it's fenced in there. And just, I feel like people are just kind of like, "Eh, no, I don't know," unless they're hiding something, unless they what? know something, and they just can't say anything. But like my chat, like I feel like they they give a bigger deal to other things, but they just breeze by the parking lot like it's nothing. Well, Weird. and it, the the whole thing that you sent me with the app, like that whole like that whole parking lot got bugs landed, like it's just green. Yeah. <laughs> it's just gone. It is gone. Now, if they if they were just repaving it, if it was just a repave, let's just say they were gonna replace the trees, put yeah, new trees in there and repave it they wouldn't have removed it from the app that's how i feel yeah definitely would have and even if they did that i feel like they would because it's a cast member a lot right so i feel like you know they want the cast members of park stores they just do it row by row there's no reason to close a whole parking lot to remove trees i can do that row by row in sections so people can still park there that's a good you point know. That's actually, actually, Ethan, that's a great point. We like, we've yeah. been racking our brains out talking about this and like no one I've talked to has brought that up, but that's a fantastic point. If it was just yeah. a repaving thing, why is it not being done in sections? Why is the whole thing cordoned off? And they're just going, like George says, balls to the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Getting rid of all of it all at this, at, at, like all at once. It makes no sense. Yeah. I mean, look, I follow construction all the time and I've seen parking lots get repaved in my own shopping center, but they didn't close the whole thing. They closed two rows, repaved the thing, replaced the trees, and they moved on. So people can, every single time I've seen a whole parking lot sectioned off and 
dawns because some new building was being built there every single time. Like when they were building that AMC dining over there at the Tatanga Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It was gone. They sectioned up. Even then they didn't section up the whole parking lot, but they sectioned up a lot of it and boom, a building popped up. So I don't know. I don't I still can't think it's because the trees I mean the trees probably did uproot the parking lot, but I don't yeah. think they closed. And then also if you look at the picture I, that I sent from Oh, you liked it on from Five Fire Mondo over there. Mondo! They were, um, they cut the trees, yeah, but then they started ripping up the actual pavement, like a whole row. Yeah. I feel like you don't need to do that to replace a tree. How no. come, how come with the Pirates of the Caribbean refurbishment, they were able just to save those trees and they take them in a pot and move them away and they didn't do all this ripping or they did but they be jiggly cute but i don't know you know i don't know seems weird trees are yeah. awesome but they don't require a whole parking lot to be closed i i guarantee you i'll be willing to bet my life bet my life savings on so what do you think what do you think is going in there like okay so let's just say it is something bigger what do you think is going in there goodness i don't know okay well let's say let's say you know, they did work on a deal with the gate tax and Disneyland Ford. And let's say it's approved, right? Let's say no one it's secretly approved, right? Right. I, you know what? Then again, D23, I would say announcement the D uh, Disneyland Ford's approved and whatever Disneyland expansion they're working on is popping up in there. That would something. be great. From your something. lips to God's ears, Mr. Wizard. It has to be. <laughs> or at least something. I don't know. And then people, I don't know why a lot of people were saying is the something related to the was the parking structure supposed to go there for the hotel tower or something? Oh, I've heard um, that, but I I never knew that was a thing. That's interesting. I never heard that. That's interesting. So like, there's, that, there's a rumor that that might become a parking structure for the DVC tower? Yeah, or I, I keep seeing that on Twitter. One person thought it was the, the DVC tower itself. And I was like, no, that's over there. I don't know. But also, Disney doesn't universal things. So they, didn't, they usually say something. But that's weird. That's but really weird. They're, they're universaling it where they just build something and don't say anything. Even the smallest things that you see a Disney Parks blog post about, like within two days of it like happening, but it's been like a week and there's like silence. It's, it's really weird. weird. It's weird. It's weird. Well, I, I was there yesterday for the uh, anniversary and uh, mm -hmm. I, I took I took I took a, a few minute break from being salty that there was no Walt Disney Street <laughs> to go over <laughs> to go over and check out that you know the construction over there at the downtown Disney parking lot you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it looks a lot more than just a typical like you know repaving because they were there was all kinds of material like piping and stuff that was like stacked there like they were gonna like you know put new piping in and all kinds of I'm like why would they do all that if they're just repaving or or even if they're replacing trees like why are they putting pipes in usually yeah, they, why big, the like, those, in a pipe? right hmm. like those big, like those big like you know pcp pipes usually yeah. are safe when there's actually a building coming you know yeah so that's, really? a, that's a interesting that's a little i'll text you the picture how much of it was like ripped up was it like it was, was the same the same amount that you sent me today i think you sent me the picture from mondo oh yeah okay it was but like that know. And you saw, saw a lot of stuff, like staging interesting, 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 yeah. you know. Here, I can even send it to you now. Um, yeah, if you want. I'm curious. Let me you know, go ahead and send that to you now. Trees, uh, trees don't require piping unless, oh, that can't be for water because that's a, those are massive pipes. Those things. Hmm. Let me see if I have it. Interesting. Oh, yeah, I thought that was very interesting. I'm here at 630. Okay, well your food is. Over. I'll show you what. Okay. All right. So um, okay, I sent it to you. It was. It's kind of. You can kind of see through the fence. If you want to share it, you can share it on here. That's fine. But you can kind of see through the fence of okay, all the piping so. and like like material. Let's find it. On um, where is it? On Twitter. 
No, no, I just uh, texted it to you. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, there is all that. There's yeah, there's a lot of pipes. Let me see if I can see. Oh no, stupid no. thing. But but yeah, there's a lot of pipes here, like so many pipes and a lot of machinery. That's not that's not repaving. You, you don't have that many pipes to repave a parking lot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that. Mm, mm, something's happening, and oh, they better tell me. They better. Tell me, unless they're waiting until D23, you know, hmm. uh, you know, let me, I'm, I'm going to spend this week messaging all the uh, Anaheim City Council members and be like, hey, did you <laughs> see we approve this land board? Do it, <laughs> did you do approve it. it? <laughs> like, did you approve it? Oh my goodness. It? This is insane. I can't believe, but you admit it's kind of weird, right? Because the little tiniest walls go up on what the tram parking lot. Everyone talks about those. I know. Uh, oh, so there's repaving by the tram loading zone. Look at these walls, but the parking lot, no one, no one. I feel like no one's talking about it besides a few people. Like, no. Are no people one's not talking blown about it. away? Like, is that like a, not a big thing to people? Bigger than, it's certainly more important than the little tram repaving. <laughs> loading zone project well, well and people it's funny too like you mentioned that even like with the community like the stuff they mm -hmm. focus on like okay like there was a lot of a lot of talk yesterday that the red car trolley came back which is fantastic mm -hmm. and it broke down mm -hmm. Whoop -dee <laughs> i mean everything breaks I mean, everything that opens breaks down because it's 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 you know it's it's the first day back in a while pirates <laughs> broke down their first day everything breaks down the first day <laughs> It's not even news. <laughs> Everybody yeah. reports on that. Everybody reports on that. You know. Yeah, I did see. I did see that so many times. The record was back and then broke down and set on because the battery is dead. And then, but see, and then the pirates reopened and closed both times. Then no one talks about the the mysterious stuff that's that's is a mysterious parking lot and i'm going to be the lead imagineer on this lead detective on this parking <laughs> lot because no one else is doing it <laughs> yeah detective say, wizard detective wizard they just say like one post and then they like go go about their merry way like insane so what do you think it's gonna um, be built on this park. I I hope it's what you say. I hope I hope it's Disneyland forward. I really really do. Um, I think that it, it it might be though. It might be downtown Disney expansion because it's like right there. It butts up against the the uh, like the old Rainforest Cafe and the ESPN zone. I can definitely see them extending downtown Disney into there. Now, I, that's a possibility. The only thing is that kind of would like I don't want that though, because if they do that, then the Disneyland forward stuff is dead. Because it's mm -hmm. then they're building that stuff, and we don't need more shops and restaurants. We need more <laughs> art. Yeah, you know, definitely do. And you know, I can get behind John. That could be a possibility. But then, why not finish the stuff that's under construction first before starting this one? Right. I know the AMC thing is still. Yeah. It's still a crater. Yeah. It hasn't. They haven't moved on that dirt pit in like at least a month. So I don't know why would you start if it was downtown Disney? Why right. would you start another thing? We're finishing another thing. I don't know. Weird, the, weird. But it ain't no trees. No, it's, it's not trees. So, sorry, Dave from Fresh Baked, but it's not <laughs> trees, buddy. <laughs> not trees. I don't care what not the cast trees. member and the, all the cat, the people in the comments go. I'm a cast member, and I, I'm telling you, it's just the roots. I don't care what you're saying. It's not the root. Well, it probably is the roots, but it's more than the roots. <laughs> <laughs> very, very interesting. I hope, but at least by D23, they say something. Well, you know, by D23, then one of two things will happen. They'll right. repave the parking lot, or it'll be a hole in the ground because they'll keep digging, and then they'll be, all right, guys, you can't still say it's trees. So one of two things will happen, too, or they'll just stop working on it and leave it like that. Leaving it as a mystery for all right. of us to just stare at and go crazy over. Oh, I know. I'm so curious. And I'm so curious. Very curious. 
You have a magic key. Yes, right? I do. When did you get it. I'm sorry. When did you get it? Oh, I got mine. Um, when did I get mine? It was last summer, I believe. I don't remember which month though. Did your 40 day thing start yet? Because I know some people no. are up with a renew now, but there's so what, what do you think is going on with that one? Do you think? Oh, well, yeah, hopefully again they'll announce it soon, but they have one until August 25th to say something. Right. Yeah, think it's uh they're hashing out trying to you know prevent, prevent any more lawsuits and they're gonna Try to, they're trying to hash out the super, super fine print before they announce some newer key program or something. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll hash it out and they'll sort of um, basically kind of kind of lawyer it up where they can kind of get around all, all the problems they had before. Um, I think that it's probably going to be – I don't think that I don't think fans are gonna be like super happy with the new thing. I, I have a feeling they're gonna kind of like it's gonna be very restrictive still. Like I think the reservations and all that will still be in place. I think Disney is really married to that whole system. They really like knowing how many people are gonna be in the park each day because that then they can perfectly staff every day and mm -hmm. there's no guesswork, you know. So I think the reservations are staying. Um, but they'll probably work out like the the tier system. So instead of like blockout dates, it'll be based on like, you know, like how many reservations you can hold or something like that, you know. So that's pretty much what I think. But I, they're not going to get rid of Magic Keys, I don't think, completely like that or at least the annual pass program because, um, you know, it's a big market and um, they're definitely going to keep it. I just think that they're just going to kind of like kind of work they're going to kind of work around the block out language and figure something else out for that in my opinion mm, yeah i think so i wonder maybe oh i was gonna say that on d23 they'll announce it but it'll be too late by then so maybe i feel like maybe hopefully soon maybe like this week but very curious to all those people that uh because i that's another thing i see on you know the Diz Twitter community, where is I? It's my 40 day renewal window. I can't renew. Oh mm -hmm. boy, where is it going? Oh, you know, they seem very frantic over there. So, oh. <laughs> hopefully, they get an answer very soon. It's affects almost like all I see. And that's funny, you see the same screenshot that different people post, and they all post the same thing, but they it's very different. I love Twitter, mm -hmm. it's funny. Oh, now switching to our orange nerd hats. Marvel, D23, Comic-Con, all of it. Boy, oh boy. Marvel, I love me some Marvel, but even I can say, the last few movies, obviously, the box office hasn't been, except for Spider-Man, hasn't been, um, you know, up to par, I guess, with the last ones. Now, which of these, or all of them, do you think could be affecting that? Quantity over quality? The 45-day window, like people expect, Oh, Dark Strange went on Disney Plus in 44 days. I don't need to see it three times in theater. I can see it one time in theater. Or um, or just too much Marvel content all at once. We know Disney Plus shows and uh, the movies. I think I saw that we crossed 100 hours of Marvel, which is like more than all the three phases combined so far. Wow. Um, so, yeah, what do you think is affecting these Marvel numbers? Well, I, I think that it's... I think I think like when I watched Multiverse of Madness, um, I was really disappointed in that movie. And a big part of the reason why I didn't really love that movie was because it really felt like a movie from like 2001 or two. Like the CGI was really bad in that movie, in my opinion. And it it, it did feel kind of campy. And it, I don't know if that's like a Sam Raimi thing or if that's just like um, like the budget like a budget thing. But I've noticed that with a couple of the Marvel projects lately. Now, I will to come to Marvel's defense, though, a little bit with this in that it might not be entirely their fault because a lot of the content we're getting now is stuff that was filmed during the pandemic. Yeah, so, restriction. Right. It was very restricted, you know, so I think that that might be a huge factor in a lot of this stuff feeling and looking kind of cheap because it was an, it was a product of that of those lockdowns. So I think that might be the main factor because I, I honestly, I, I really do trust Kevin Feige. I think he does have quality. He's kind of a quality first kind of guy. And um, I think he's really working his best to do it. I just think that like 
you know, a lot of these, a lot of this stuff like, uh, like multiverse and like this uh, Thor movie, they were just filmed during that lockdown era. And it just, I think, it, I think all of that really affected these projects quite a bit, you know? So yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Oh. coming out of that now. So I, well, the new stuff coming, you know, in the next year, two years, I think will be better. Yeah, that's a good point. That's something actually I haven't seen a single person say, which is very <laughs> interesting. They all say a whole bunch of different things. Now, do you think, like for you, because you're more of a Star Wars fan, yeah. do you think it's too much like, too much Marvel uh, series and movies all coming out within like a few weeks of each other? No, I'm never. I never get sick of any franchise. The only time I ever get sick of a franchise is if the if the if the content stops being good. So mm -hmm. you can turn out a new show every couple of weeks, and I'll be happy if every show come, coming out every two weeks is fantastic. Oh, I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm good. But when the con but when the quality starts to do this, you get a little more fatigued, and that's why I think you're starting to see a little bit more like a lot of people coming out now saying, "Oh, now I have Marvel fatigue." Well, mm -hmm. now they have moral fatigue because a lot of stuff like we talked about, mm -hmm. the quality is kind of dipping, you know? And so that's why they're fatigued. But if, if they were hitting home run, home run, home run, home run, nobody would be tired of it. So my my answer in short is I don't care how often they do it as long as it's really, really good quality. And I'll be on that hype train mm -hmm. as long as it's really good. And if it comes out every two weeks, every month. I'm there for it, whether it's Marvel, Star Wars, any of it. But the quality has to be there to keep me like, like, mm -hmm. like engaged. watching it. And, yeah, engaged. It, it, it can't, it can't start to dip, you know. And from what I understand, actually, the, um, the show, the Star Wars show coming out, um, Skeleton Crew, has a budget. budget. Yeah, hundred and like thirty-five million, I think, for that budget. What the Mandalorian? more than the Mandalorian. So that's, that's encouraging, you know, stuff like that. And I think Marvel will start getting their budgets upped as well. The pandemic is kind of behind us. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I think, I think the content's going to improve. And I think that once that happens, I think you're going to see less people complaining about too much in, in my opinion. And how are you feeling by the way? I know you had the Rona. Oh man. You know, I, I, if I, if I didn't test out of, because I was going to Disney that day, if I didn't test, and that's funny that they actually, I think I had it, but I tested negative. I don't know. But um, the next day, if I didn't get congested and have a runny nose, I wouldn't have tested at all. So I was pretty good. I had, I had it for, according to the test, I had it for two days. So wow. it's very short. <laughs> um, I don't know if the new variant is, you know, gives you a short amount of time, but thank goodness if it does. But yeah, I felt just like just a like cold like the first time. So yeah. that's good. Um, that's, that's how it felt for me too. But I, I got I got I got I got the Rona back in like around New Year's actually, like the like after Christmas before New Year's, mm -hmm. I got it and I was sick. I had like a like the first day, I had like a really bad headache. I was kind of nauseous too. I don't know if that was like the medicine or if it was the mm -hmm. if it was the Rona, but I had a headache and I was nauseous. And the next day. Like, like I was like you, I had like a runny nose, but I didn't feel bad. And by day like three or four, I was good. It wasn't that yeah. bad. So yeah, thank goodness. Luckily, hopefully most people are feel like that. If you're in the hospital, then I'm so sorry. But, <laughs> yes. you know, shout out to all the people that are A-OK. -okay. Now you gotta watch out for monkey pox. <laughs> and then Bye. something else in two years, and then uh, what you call it? What is it? Well, oh, yeah. Pfizer got to make their money, man. You know, you got to <laughs> have something. You got to have something. <laughs> the Ethan Fox. <Potts. laughs> oh, now, two Marvel people are set to do Star Wars projects, but we have got no update on them. Do you think one? Kevin Foggy's Tars project still happening. I think he actually provided some kind of update on it, like recently. And Taika Waititi, I know he said something that he's still thinking of an idea. Do you think we'll get updates on those soon, or there? Do you think they're still happening, or are you still as excited for them as you were when they were announced? Yeah, I'm a really, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to see what Kevin Feige has, what he has planned for Star Wars, because I'm a huge Feige fan. I think he's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Um, Taika Waititi, I'm not a huge fan of his, like, 
of a lot of his work, to be honest with you. And I know I'm in the minority with that because mm-hmm. a lot of people love like Ragnarok and stuff like that. I'm just not really into that, like really cheesy kind of humor. Do um, you think he'd make his Star Wars project silly? I hope not. I hope not. But I will, I will give him credit, though. He did a really good job with his Mandalorian episodes. They weren't really cheesy. So I'm mm-hmm. I'm holding out hope. I'm holding out hope. Yeah, yeah. He did good. Also, he did a good job voicing that robot, a droid. That's one of my favorite droids. I love that. Thing. <laughs> but, that was cool. The IG, I think it's IG-11, I think. Or yeah, IG-11, yeah, IG-11 something like that. Something, yeah. Which reminds me of Instagram. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> so do you think you'll get any sort of update on one of those at uh, D23, Comic-Con, or Disney Plus Day, anything? I think so. I think either D23 or Comic-Con will get an update on one or both of those. You know, the only thing that kind of, I think Kevin Feige, his thing will happen because he's like the golden goose of Disney. Like Mm -hmm. everything he does is like, you know, makes them a lot of money. But I'm a little worried for Taika's project though, because Kathleen Kennedy, she has a history of like picking up these directors when they're hot. I'll give you an example. A few examples, actually. She picks up um, the Game of Thrones guys, right? Because Oh, Oh, yeah. Hot, hot, hot. And then season eight comes out, and then, oh, scheduling conflicts. They got Then Thor's box office. <laughs> well, then, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. But then you have pa- Patty Jenkins, who did Wonder Woman. So Kennedy was like, oh, Patty, come on, let's go, let's do a Star Wars movie. But then, <laughs> but then Wonder Woman 2 comes out, <laughs> and then scheduling conflicts. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, a pattern is developing every single time. So Taika, he did Ragnarok, he crushed it, right? Mm. Well, now he did Thor four, Love and Thunder, and people aren't really <laughs> loving it. Is she gonna? Are we gonna hear scheduling conflicts again? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Very interesting. That is, she yeah, because Rogue Squadron just flew away, and then the other one, and then. Of course, the Wish McCullough. What's his name? Uh, oh, um, oh, Colin Trevorrow that, is another one. That one, yeah. And also, The Last Jedi, Ryan Johnson. He had a whole Star Wars trilogy. It kind of disappeared into the depths of the thing. I don't know. I don't I guess that was, was that even creative differences? Or did he just not want to do it anymore? Yeah, I think that they got a lot of heat for for TLJ, so I think they might have just said, "Okay, yeah, we're we're good," <laughs> yeah, because they can like not a peep. It's just he doesn't even hear him talk anymore. Like, gone, gone. Very interesting. Oh, Star Wars! I hope they can write the ship. Now they have some good Hopefully. shows coming. So, yes, the Acolytes, Ahsoka, the High Republic thing. I I feel like. Kathleen's right in there, or whoever said the Skywalker thing. I feel like, I think you actually, you guys even said it. You know, I feel like if they get away from the Skywalker saga and start brand new, then I feel like they can't mess up because then people will be like, oh, well, then you messed up. This is a continuity error because in episode four or the episode six, well, wait, in episode two, if you just get away from the whole story, it's new content. So you, you can't be like, oh, but. Later on, you can't, and also, like with Obi Wan, the Obi Wan show, lastly, there's you know, you know, Obi Wan and Darth Vader, you can't, they can't die in the show because they, they're gonna survive. So, you, you know, you don't have any limitations if you set, um, if you just get away from things that haven't been published before. Right. Yeah. Then you don't get. Yeah. Like you. You don't get in trouble with fans then because you're not consistent with the continuity, mm-hmm. or you know you have more freedom creatively. Um, you're not touching legacy characters, so there's mm-hmm. less, people aren't as invested, so they're not as emotional about this stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's just a whole. There's a lot of benefit just to creating your own stories, your own characters, and kind of getting away from the Skywalker mm-hmm. stuff. So mm-hmm. we'll see. Exactly. So I hope the newer stuff seems to be doing that. Um, so that's cool. Well, thank you so much for joining on this live stream. Or clap it flew by, it flew by as, as fast as a petrodon from Jurassic World. <laughs> <laughs> and well, show everyone thank- where they can find you and buy your shirt. <laughs> you can find me on YouTube at Orange Grove Fifty Five, where we do content 
similar to Ethan's, like I said, but a lot of th- we do a lot of theme park stuff, but mostly on at, you know Disneyland. We do talk about a lot of entertainment stuff, like the MCU and Star Wars and things like that. We've had this guy on our on the channel many Ooh. many times. He's he's been on the OG five five. So I yeah, even have my fun. own intro on there. Yes, he does. <laughs> So it, it, it's it's a fun time. We'd love to have you if you want to join us over there. And uh, yeah, just Orange Row 55 on YouTube. And stay tuned because Eric July is coming. They're, he's coming on the channel. We're going to make it happen. Come on, Eric. Come on. We got to talk about the Ripperverse. <laughs> That's right. And to talk about the Ripperverse, you got to like, subscribe, and share this awesome video. And as always, have a fantastic day. Record. Uh.